What's up YouTube and welcome to another draw along with me where today we're going to go ahead and create this lighthouse in a jar design. Now as always there's links to everything you're going to need in the description down below the palette any brushes I may have used that are additional outside of Procreate as well as the canvas size. So once you've grabbed everything and you've created your canvas you've got everything you need for today's design. Now if you like these types of tutorials I post weekly tutorials here on my YouTube channel but I also post three more exclusive tutorials every single month over on my Patreon. If you're interested in becoming a patron I'll leave a link in the description down below. And with all that said let's get started. So once you've created your canvas the first thing we're going to start off with is creating the basic shapes of everything we need in the design and that's going to start off with the little wooden base and then into the glass and then the shapes with inside the glass. So we're going to go ahead and go straight up to our colours. We're going to grab this colour here so it is the third column from the right and the middle colour. We're going to go to our brush library. We're going to go to calligraphy and we're going to use the monoline brush. Always a really good brush if you need to create solid shapes. And my brush size is going to be down to 1% just so we can keep it nice and small. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create a series of ellipses and then build up that foundation at the bottom. So there'll be some duplication of some layers but just bear with me and trust the process we'll get through it. So the first thing we're going to do is create the very first sort of ellipse. So we're going to draw an ellipse, hold your pen down and pop your finger on the screen to make sure it's nice and horizontal. And size wise we're going to go for something like this and don't worry about the final sort of angle we'll fix that in a second so pop your finger on the screen and we're going to go for something like this we're going to grab our cursor and then we're going to use the freeform option here just to bring this node down a little bit and just just create a bit more of a flatter look till we create an ellipse like this so if you're interested in my final sizes there it's 1137 by 262 tap on your cursor when you're done and now we're going to duplicate this a couple of times to create the shape that we need. So we're going to go to our layers next. We're going to swipe this to the left and duplicate it. We're going to grab our cursor again. We're going to use the uniform option and we're going to scale it down in size a little bit and just move that a little bit higher. So what we're going to do is I'm going to make that a little bit wider than that because what we're doing is we're looking for a couple of little shapes that we're making within this. We're looking for this shape here, which is going to act as the base of our little wooden sort of stand for everything so I'm going to make it a little bit wider and I'll give you the final sizes as we just did a second ago but I'm trying to just about get that right angle and make sure if you go to snapping and make sure snapping is turned on you'll hit that orange line in the middle of the screen to let you know you're nice and central therefore everything is nice and balanced on either side and then I'm going to go ahead and tap in the node in the top right that's the final dimensions for that layer and then we're going to tap on the cursor when we're done what we're then going to do is, is go to our layers. We're going to go ahead and duplicate this top layer here. So we're going to swipe it to the left and duplicate it. And then we're going to go ahead and turn off the bottom two. So now we're left with just one of these rings. Now we're going to work on the middle part of the wooden area. So we're just going to simply swipe this one to the left and duplicate it. So we've got two at the top. Grab your cursor and just move that up in terms of height and we're going to go for something a little bit like this so we've got a little bit of that depth there on the side and then tap on your cursor when you're done and we can leave that layer as it is so again we're going to go back to our layers we're then going to go ahead and turn off this layer here so that is the bottom ring there we're going to swipe this layer to the left and duplicate it the bottom one out of the two turn it off then we're going to go to our layers we're going to duplicate this one and then we're going to grab our cursor we're going to go ahead and use the uniform option to scale it down in size. So just grab that middle node and then also grab the freeform option and make it a little bit flatter. So this will just change the angle a little bit. We're going to move this up and this is going to be the ridge around the glass. So I'm actually going to make my uniform a little bit wider. And we just want to aim for a very sort of thin rim around the outside here. So probably a little something like this. So this is the final size. And I'm going to tap on my cursor when we're done. Now I can show you how we're going to incorporate all those layers into one. So we're going to go to our layers. The top two layers we've got here are the top part of the wooden area. So we can turn that on and off just to be sure. What we're going to do is we're going to tap on the top one and we're going to merge it down. So that's now on one layer. Now you'll be able to grab your color and drag it into this space here. What we're then going to go ahead and do is go up to our actions. We're going to turn on a drawing guide and we're going to edit that drawing guide. And we're going to use the symmetry option and we're going to make sure the option is set to vertical. 
hit done when you're done. And this is why snapping was important to make sure everything's in the center because now we're going to use this to erase from both sides at the same time. Again, keeping things nice and symmetrical. So we're going to go to our eraser. We're going to tap on the eraser and we're going to go to calligraphy and the monoline brush. The size doesn't really matter. Mine is set to 56. And that's just big enough that I can get rid of a whole line and not leave any excess. And I can also get rid of the back area as well. Now what we want to do is we want to kind of just bring this round and into this inner curve and get rid of the excess above and below. So a little something like this, we may have to just think about erasing down and into that. So we've got rid of that top area and I'm going to just erase ever so slightly down into that area there because the glass is going to go straight out of this bit of wood. And there we go. That's the first layer done. We're going to go ahead and turn that one off and we'll work on the next two. So turn on the next two layers down, which are these two. For these ones, we're going to go ahead and tap on this layer here, which is the top ring. Tap on it and merge it down. So we're going to go to merge down. We're going to tap on this layer and turn on the drawing assist. So now it uses the symmetry. We're going to go back to our brush. We're going to go ahead and zoom in and we're going to go ahead and link these two lines here. So I'm just going to simply tap here, draw a line down perfectly straight. You can even pop your finger on the screen if you want to make sure it's perfectly straight into that line. And now what you can do is if we zoom out again, it's now done it on both sides. We can drag and drop the color into this space here and into these on these sides there. And you can see now this side here is the one we're going to see. So again, we're going to erase this back area. So we're going to go to our eraser, get rid of this. It's not too important to be too tidy. You just don't want to go inside the shape. So you just want to get rid of the excess just a little bit on that edge because the way the layers stack, that little bit there will be hidden. And we'll go ahead and just erase the back area as well just to make sure and just curve that into there. So that's all you need to do. Then when we go to our layers, we'll turn this one off and we'll work on the final two layers underneath. So we'll turn them both on. And then what we'll do is we'll tap on the top layer of the two, tap on it and again, merge it down to the one underneath it. Tap on this layer, tap on the option of drawing assist to turn that on. And then when we zoom in on the sides, we're gonna go back to our brush Make sure it's still the monoline brush and we're just going to link up these edges here so just linking that up and just fill in that tiny gap and then zooming out you'll be able to see that's done on both sides you can then drag and drop the color into this space here and again you can grab your eraser and then delete this back area here off both edges and then just get rid of any excess now this is again doesn't really matter too much the way that the layers are stacked up it's just so that we make sure that things resemble what they should do to an extent. Because if I now go to my layers and I turn on the other two above, we've now created the wooden shape at the bottom. Everything is now ready to go. Now we're gonna go ahead now and work on the idea of creating the glass at the top. So for this, we've got to create a new layer. We're gonna go ahead and drag it underneath all three of these pieces of wood. They're pretty much gonna stay at the top. Now, if you want to, you can actually swipe on these left to right and group them together and we'll just call this base because that's going to be the wooden base and we can collapse that group down that will just keep things nice and organized and then on this new layer layer four here we're going to tap on the layer and we're going to turn on the drawing assist so it uses the symmetry option we're going to go to our colors and we're going to grab this color here it's the middle color on the second column from the right brush size is still one percent and what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we need to draw a line that's going to basically run up to this edge here of the glass kind of like there almost and straight up so we're going to undo that and what we're going to do is we're going to sort of start in here as best we can and draw a line straight up and pop your finger on the screen to make sure it's nice and vertically straight that way now we've got it on both sides but what we also need to do is we need to zoom in on this and we need to put our pen directly back down where we were and just make it a little bit longer so popping my finger on the screen again so if i go ahead and go up to my layers and turn off the base you can see this line just goes a little bit further underneath. In fact, while that base is turned off, I'm just gonna go ahead and simply join up these at the bottom. They don't need to be anything special. They just need to link at the bottom so we can fill in the shape later on. Let's go back and turn the base on again. And we can see if we go ahead and go into the base a second and we go to that top rim there, we just need to go ahead and grab our eraser and zoom in. And now we can use that line that we just made using the eraser 
making it a little bit smaller, we can just tidy this up now, making sure that the glass perfectly just runs into the wooden base. That looks nice and tidy. Let's then go to our layers. We'll collapse the base down again. Now just above layer four, we're gonna go ahead and create a new layer. We're gonna to go to our brush, and we're gonna go ahead and draw in a circle as best we can that matches up to the width of those two lines. So we'll draw a circle, we'll pop our finger on the screen to make sure it's a nice perfect circle. And when you're just about there, you can let go. Then what we can do is we can grab our cursor and we can go ahead and just zoom in on both sides. So again, using snapping, we want to be in the middle leg. See that middle line's now turned orange. And we want to zoom in and we want to make sure that this line here that we created, the straight line runs directly into there. And you can see my line at the minute has a one pixel sort of gap on the side. So I'm going to go ahead and use the uniform option here. And I'm just going to go ahead until I can see this node here at the bottom, just adjust it until it pretty much matches up to that line. And then we're going to zoom in on the opposite side, make sure that that is also nice and tidy. So this is just creating the basic shapes, as I said, and making sure we hit that line as best we can. Tap on our cursor when we're done and then just inspect the work you've done. Make sure you're happy with it because when you are, you can then go up to your layers and you can tap on the circle and you can merge it down into the lines below. And you can drag the color into the top circle and also the color into this area here. And that's gonna be your little glass or dome. And because we made it a little bit longer at the bottom, we do have the option if we grab our cursor, just to move this up slightly, just making it a little bit taller. We want a little bit of height in here and but you also want to leave a little bit of a gap here because we're also going to duplicate this layer in a second so tapping on our cursor that is going to be our dome for the design so then we're going to go to the layer we're going to swipe it to the left and duplicate it we're going to go ahead and go to our colors we're going to grab this color here in the top right of the palette and drag and drop it into the middle then we're going to grab our cursor we're gonna make sure we're using the uniform option. We're gonna make it a little bit smaller and we're gonna move it again into the center. Now, what we're trying to do at this point is, this is gonna be the inside and this little bit of the base color that we just added in underneath is the sort of thickness of the glass in the side profile. So because we made it a little bit longer at the bottom, we've now got a little bit of space, just a little bit to play with in terms of making sure that we make it a little bit smaller it sits in the center and the edge is perfectly the same sort of width all the way around. And tapping on our cursor, we can now see that the glass now has a little bit of a thick edge to it. And now we've got a nice space on the inside to also contain our design. And now what we can also do is go up to our layers. We can tap on our background color and we can grab the dark color here in the top right of the palette that matches the color on the inside and hit done when you're done. So that's a lot of the sort of foundations for creating the objects in terms of the bigger shapes. We now need to go ahead and create the shapes on the inside of the actual glass area. So everything is gonna be clipped to this layer here. So it is the darker version on the inside and we're actually gonna tap on it and we're gonna rename it and we're gonna call it inside jar. That's just gonna let us know that that is the layer that's on the inside of the jar this one underneath here will be the glass sort of rim around the outside there. So we're gonna start off by creating a new layer. We're gonna tap on this layer and clipping mask it to the inside jar. We're gonna to go to our colors and we're gonna grab this color here. It is the middle color in the first column. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to our layer, tap on it and turn on the drawing assist. And this is gonna be the layer that's gonna contain the water. So the rim here is gonna come across and then we're gonna fill in the bottom area so it's the sort of side profile of the ocean. So to start with, all we're gonna do is go ahead and draw in an ellipse in the middle of the screen. So we're gonna go ahead and try and draw in an ellipse like so. And because we've got the drawing assist on, it may look a little bit funny, but all we're trying to do is just make sure if you pop your finger on the screen that you go pretty much to the edges. Then what you can do is just grab your cursor, use the freeform option and just sort of flatten that down a little bit. I'm gonna make it a little bit flatter and I also want to make sure it runs into the glass on the sides. So a little bit like this, over to those edges. And the top area doesn't really matter. So I'm going to move this up until our sort of ocean area is roughly this sort of height. Tapping on my cursor when I'm done. This is the space we're interested in. We can now actually grab our eraser 
and erase this top section. So make your eraser bigger again, erase this back area. We're only interested in this line here. And then we're gonna grab our little brush there and we're gonna go ahead and go down this edge here. So you can just about see my work. All we're trying to do is create a loop. So I'm going down this edge here and then I'm just gonna go ahead and draw all the way to the middle. So you can't see that, but what we've done is we've created a little loop that starts here, goes all the way around and then across that arc. So we can drag and drop the color into this space here. The next step is to then go ahead and distort this so it looks a bit more like waves. So we're gonna go ahead and go to the layer, tap on it and turn off the drawing assist. And I'm gonna make my brush size a little bit bigger now, roughly around about sort of that. I'm gonna go up to something around about 60%. And all we're gonna do is just distort this line now by creating some wavy shapes in the side of the glass that will just break up that edge a little bit more, make it look a little bit more rough. Then what we're gonna do is go to our layers. We're gonna create another new layer and we're gonna drag it underneath that ocean layer. So I'm gonna rename that one that we just created, just so we know. We're gonna go ahead and rename this ocean. And then I can tap on the bottom one out of the two. I can rename this. I'm gonna call this ocean surface. Again, just so that you've got an idea as to what it is I'm referring to. And then I'm gonna to go to my colors. I'm gonna go ahead and grab this color here. So it's the middle color in the second column. I'm gonna reduce my brush size down to 1% again. And then all we're gonna do is go ahead and draw in an ellipse that pretty much matches up to what was the ellipse of this area here. So I'm gonna pop my finger on the screen to make sure it's nice and horizontal. And also it runs into the side edges there. I'm gonna grab my cursor first of all, make sure we hit that center point. Everything needs to be symmetrical. I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller. And I'll also give you the final sizes of that as well so you can see perfectly what I've got. I'm gonna make it a little bit flatter because it is the side view of the water. I'm gonna go ahead and give you those final dimensions of 1001 by 149. And then I'm gonna tap on my cursor when I'm done. I'm then gonna go ahead and drag the color into that space there. And then we're gonna grab our eraser again. And we're just gonna go ahead and start to just roughen up the edges on the back there as well. So just creating some nice little bits of wave in the back, just making it a little bit more rough. And that's our ocean. The next step now is to create all the pieces of land. So we're gonna to go to our layers. We're gonna go underneath the ocean surface and tap on the inside jar and create a new layer. We're gonna create the little bits in the back first. So we're gonna to go to our colors. We're gonna grab the second color on the top row. We can make our brush size a bit smaller, 1%. And we're just gonna create some really basic sort of rocky areas in the back there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and create a little bit of a peak here. Let that just run down and then maybe a little peak here too and just let that run round to the right. It doesn't have to be even. We've got other things we can fill in the gaps with to sort of balance it out a little bit more. And then go from this point here, go down this line and go all the way around to your start point so that you can drag and drop the color into that space. Then we're just gonna grab the eraser. We're gonna make sure it's nice and big, around about 70%. And we're gonna just create those little cutaways again, but in the rocks. So I'm just sort of creating little wave-like shapes just to create some fun little background shapes. Then we're going to go ahead and go to our layers again. Underneath this layer we just created we're going to tap on the inside jar again and create a new layer. We're going to go to our colors and we're going to grab this color here the third color on that top row and then we're going to create some more rocky areas and now you can try to sort of fill in the gaps a little bit more. So I'm going to start off by creating sort of a rocky peak here let that sort of run into this area here, a little more of a rocky area there and off to the edge. That will somewhat balance out the design a little bit more. And again, we're gonna go from this end point here. We're gonna go down, and we're gonna go all the way around, draw in and align to your start point. So you can drag and drop the color into that space. And just like before, we're gonna to go to our eraser and we're gonna give it that kind of wavy cutaway sort of look to it. So I'm just gonna bounce my pen into it just creating some fun little shapes. And now we can create the front area here where the lighthouse is gonna sit. So we're gonna to go to our layers. We're gonna go ahead and tap on the ocean surface layer and we're gonna create a new layer. We're gonna to go to our colors and we're gonna grab the first color on the top row. Now this is gonna be where our lighthouse sits. So essentially what we need to do is we need to basically give a little bit of a sort of flat edge there and you can draw that in if you want to. That's basically where the lighthouse just needs a little bit of a flat edge. 
And then from there, you could pretty much just draw off to the edges like so. Just create a little sort of rocky area for your lighthouse to sit on. You want it to be as sort of symmetrical as you can. So if you went a little bit wider on one end, you can maybe erase it in a second. And then you just want to go ahead and just go across. Now don't worry about sort of the curved edge. We'll get rid of that in a second. Drag and drop the color in. And that's going to be where your lighthouse sits. So what we can then do is go to our eraser again and give it that wavy chop away look. So we're just going to chop away into it. And this is where I can now balance out my design a little bit more. This edge over here went a little bit too far. So I'm just going to chop away into that and then maybe chop away into here too. Just creating some fun little wavy shapes just using the eraser. And then we'll do exactly the same at the bottom. So we're going to go ahead and just create some little wavy shapes in there for the water and even just chop the end off there. So there we go. That's where our lighthouse is going to sit. I can then grab my cursor and maybe move it into the middle just to make sure it's nice and symmetrical hit in that center point like so. And then tap on my cursor when I'm done. Now let's go ahead and create the lighthouse. So we're going to go to our layers. The lighthouse is going to need to sit sort of somewhat towards the top. So I'm going to go ahead and tap above the ocean area and create a new layer. I'm going to tap on this layer and I'm going to add a drawing assist. I'm going to go to my colors. I'm going to grab this red here. So this bottom row here is pretty much everything to do with the lighthouse. I'm going to tap on the red and I'm going to make my monoline brush 1%. And then we're going to create the sort of main body of the lighthouse. So zooming out, I can see the sort of the scale with the mountains in the background. I'm going to go ahead and just create a line up from one side here. And you want it to lean inwards ever so slightly. So just a little bit of a lean inwards. And then I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on the bottom and just create a little bit of a curve at the bottom rather than a straight line, a nice little curve there. And that's pretty much the scale I've gone with for mine. I'm not going to adjust that at all. And then what we'll do is we'll zoom in on the top here. We'll go ahead and just almost draw in a straight line across, drag and drop the color into this space here. We're going to go to our colors and we're going to grab this color here. We're going to grab this one, the fourth color on that bottom row. And we're then going to go ahead and go along that line, overlapping the top. And then we're just going to sort of peek that outwards a little bit, creating a little bit of a ledge here at the top and then linking them together. If I invert this color for a second, I'm just going to invert it just so you can see the shape that I've made a little bit easier. That's the top of the lighthouse. I'm going to undo that. I'm then going to go ahead and go to my layers. I'm going to create a new layer and I'm just going to drag it underneath that lighthouse layer for a second. It will clip itself. Tap on the layer and turn off the clipping mask. Then go to your colors and grab the red again. Go back to the layer, tap on it and turn on the drawing assist. And we're just going to go ahead and create where the actual light is going to sit. So just about the width of the lighthouse, we're going to go ahead and create a straight line up. It's reflected on both sides, of course. And we're going to go ahead and draw in another line here. Just that is the area where the light is going to be. Now those lines can stay underneath there for a second. We're going to go back to our layers and go back to this layer here. So the main actual shape for the lighthouse. And then we're going to use these as a guide. We're going to go ahead and just draw in a little curve that goes across ever so slight curve to that. And then we'll create the top as well. So just let it roll into a point at the top and then drag and drop the color in. So there we go. We've got our lighthouse shape ready to go. We can actually zoom in now. We can go to our layers. We can pinch those layers together so we can pinch the lighthouse and the lines that we made into one. I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to drag it underneath the lighthouse. So I'm going to drag it underneath. It will clip itself again because we've got a clip section here. And you know that because the icon's here. Tap on the layer and turn off the clipping mask. Then go back to your colors and grab this gray here. It is the third color on that bottom row. And we're just going to go ahead and just draw in a box here and then drag and drop the color in. That's just going to be sort of the glass on the inside. Now we can go ahead and add some extra details to the lighthouse. So we're going to go ahead and go to our layers. We're going to go to the lighthouse layer and create a new layer above it and tap on it. And we're going to go ahead and clipping mask it. We're also going to tap on the layer and turn on the drawing assist. And we're going to go to our colors and grab this second color in the bottom row. Now you can make your brush size pretty big if you want to at this point, sort of around about sort of maybe 80%. And what you're going to do is, is basically that we're going to go ahead and draw in some nice sort of 
uh, stripes around the actual lighthouse. So I'm going to start in the middle and I don't want it to be a straight line. I want it to have a bit of a curve to it. I'm going to hold it down at the end just so I can adjust the angle slightly where possible. And then I know that in the middle here is where I need to replicate that again. And then I'm going to go ahead and come through here just like so. And then I'm going to go ahead and go in from here, creating an arc, making sure that gaps as close as I can to keeping that nice and consistent. And then our lighthouse has got some nice white stripes on it. Now we can go ahead and go to our colors. We're going to go ahead and grab this color here. It is the fourth color on that bottom row. We're going to make our brush size down to 1% and we're just going to draw in some very basic shapes on the front here. So I'm going to go ahead and draw in sort of the door shape. So it's just going to be round and into a point. Link that up at the bottom and drag and drop the color in. And that's all you want to add in for that. And then in all the white areas, we're just going to add like a little window area. So we can just draw in a straight line across. And then again, just up into a point, making sure it's nice and in the middle of that area. So just drawing a little line across. You want these all to be pretty much the same. Into a point, fill in the gap. And again, drawing a line across. And up into a point and fill in the gap. And then we've got some basic details on our lighthouse. So that is actually it for a second in terms of creating all the basic shapes that we need. So well done at this point. We've done a lot of different sort of shape creation. We can now move into adding in some extra colors, different tones here and there, and some fun little effects. So we're gonna go ahead now and add in a background sky. So we're gonna to go to our layers. We're gonna go ahead and go to the inside jar layer and we're gonna create a new layer because we need this on a separate one for a moment. What we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to our colors and our background now will consist of these two extra colors. So we're gonna grab this color here, the middle color on the far right column. We're going to go up to our selection tool and we're going to use the rectangle option with color fill turned on. So we're going to want to need to check that on. We're then going to want to go ahead and go all the way to the edge of the canvas. That's pretty crucial at this point. So we're going to go ahead and draw in a little rectangle here, edge to edge, and make sure you sort of copy where I am in terms of the colors here. This is quite important as well. So we're going to go across from here. I'm going to tap on my selection tool. I'm then going to go up to my colors and grab the bottom color in that far right column. Grab my selection tool again, and I'm going to draw it in again right from the edges and all the way down to, let's go down to roughly this sort of point here. So sort of where the rectangle here touches the bottom of the wood and let go. Tap on your selection tool when you're done and you've now got these sort of blocks. If we go up to our adjustments and we go to Gaussian Blur, we can swipe from left to right and that will nicely just blend them into one another and that will just give us a nice little background gradient. Now we can decide where we want to leave this. I'm going to go up to about sort of about sort of 37 or 38 percent. That gives us a nice dark spot at the top there and then tap on your adjustments when you're done. Now that was important because if we go up to our layers and swipe that to the left and duplicate it, we can actually drag it down now just in front of our background color. And that then gives your jar a little bit of a sort of transparent effect as if the background of the jar is actually the background of our design as well. Then what we can do is go up to our layers. We're going to go ahead and in that area. So this is our little background gradient inside of the jar. We're going to go ahead and create a new layer. We're going to go to our colors. We're going to go ahead and grab this color here. It is the middle color and the fourth column from the right. We're going to go to our brush library and we're going to go down to the option of luminance for you it'll be called and we're going to use this beautiful brush here the light pen now the size is set to 21 percent this is a pressure sensitive brush if you press really lightly you'll get a little scribble and if you press really firm you'll get a really big line there now we're going to go ahead and use a lot of pressure at the top and gradually get smaller as you make your way down the sky so this may take a number of attempts, but we're going to go ahead and press really firm, come into here, get a lot, lot lighter, and then let that run out to the left like so. That is exactly what we want to try and aim for. So that then we've got a little bit of space over here and we can kind of replicate that. So just create another very thin sort of S shape. And that's going to be our sort of northern lights that sit in the sky. Now at the minute that doesn't look like much, but if we go up to our adjustments and we go to motion blur, if we drag down the screen nice and vertically we can blur them out until we get something really quite pretty like this where we've got some really nice line work dancing in the background of our sky and there we go we've got our lights ready to go we then want to go ahead and tap on our adjustments 
We then want to go to our layers. We're going to create a new layer. We're going to rename this layer and we're going to call it stars. And we're just going to go back up to our colors and grab this color here at the top of that fourth column from the right. And using the same brush, we're just going to go ahead and tap a few times to create some stars. So the lighter you press, the smaller the star will be. And obviously the firmer you press, you can get a nice bright one like so. And they'll have a really beautiful glow to them. And you can just tap away, create nice little clusters of stars. So we're just going to create some really fun, very easy stars in the background here. Create some different shapes, different sizes. Of course, you want to be, you want to be dotting down, making sure that you create some really nice circles you don't want to be creating dashes if you drag you'll end up with something like this and we don't want to add a shooting star necessarily into this one there's already a really nice sort of main element to the sky which is of course the lights here in the sky so i'm just going to tap away a few times creating a really quite pretty little sort of sky up here some nice brighter stars and don't be afraid to sort of create little clusters like this they always look really good i'm going to tap away even more filling out that sky you can put some right close to the northern sort of lights here just filling in those little areas here and a nice full sky will look really really good and a little bit something like this so that's the background area done we're now going to go ahead and work on these areas here to reflect that bit of sort of the color coming from the sky so we're going to go to our layers we're going to go ahead and work on this layer here. So that is the background set of mountains there. All we're going to do is tap on this layer and alpha lock it, which means we can no longer paint outside of it, which is great because we can then go to our colors. We can then grab this color here, the middle color in the fourth column from the right. We're going to go to our brush library. We're going to keep it simple by using the airbrushing and the soft brush and any sort of peak on your mountains. So my brush size is about five or 6%. Any peak that's sort of facing up at our light, so we're just going to add in a nice little splash of colour. So nothing too big like that, you want to just keep it a little bit sort of skinny here and there. And then this edge here, I'm going to do the left hand edge, because there's a nice peak here facing up at our light source. That's going to look really nice. And then a little bit here on the edge as well. Just something really simple like so. Then what we can do is just go up to our colours and we can go ahead and grab this colour. It is the fourth colour on that top row. And it's going to be a shadow color and we're just going to go ahead and darken up towards the bottom so we're going to introduce a lot more contrast now and just blend in a little bit of darkness at the bottom up into those areas and while we're working on the layer we'll also go back to our brushes i'll have included this medium blend adjusted brush now the adjustments here are set to 65 percent opacity and the size is set to about about three percent all we're going to do is keep it really simple and on the peaks here, just in behind them, just add in a little bit of darkness and then maybe the odd little random streak up towards your peaks. That's all you want to do. Just darken up the back of the peak like so and then just create some really rough, really rough sort of darker areas in your little mountain areas here. I'm trying to keep sort of the shading quite simple really, nothing too crazy. But just a little something like that will give it a lot more character and you can be bold and add in some really big dashes of color. Let's then replicate exactly that again, but on this set of mountains. So we're going to go back to our layers, go up a layer, tap on that layer and also alpha lock it. Go to the colors. We're going to go ahead and grab the bottom color in the fourth column. First of all, this one here, this blue. Go back to our brush and go back to airbrushing, but go up to the soft brush. And again, anything facing the light source. So we're going to introduce a little bit of blue on here before we add in some green. So this blue area can be a little bit bigger. Again, anything that faces up to our light source will look great. A little splash of color over there. Maybe even just a little bit here, just on here. Maybe there's a little bit catching the light. Then go to your colors and grab the middle color in that fourth column. And again, just with the green, I'm going to make it a bit bigger, about 6%. Anything that faces the light source, we're going to introduce some color onto. So a little bit onto there and a little bit onto here. Now this will look great because it will blend into the blue. So I'm just adding a little bit on that top edge like so. And then just like before, we then go to our colors and grab the fourth color on that top row. We darken it up at the bottom. We want to keep this nice and dark down here. Nice and dark. 
let that run in behind the back of your sort of peaks over here just adding in a big block of color basically to start with you can push it upwards as well if you want to sort of thin out some of your highlights and then we're going to go back to that blend brush i created so this one here and then just in behind these peaks just introduce some big areas of color so just maybe just random little shapes here and there you can push your color around a little bit and you'll create just random little streaks that's all we want to do so sort of create random bits of darkness on the back area and then the odd little bit here will look great it'll look like it's just like creating a bit of a sort of 3d space we can do the same down here too where we're just creating a, a little bit of a more bumpy lumpy rocky edge in there behind the back of this peak here i'm going to just chuck in some color behind there and then i'm going to just let that sort of spill down around the hill and again i'll darken up the back end of here too and just let that sort of spill round into sort of the rocky area and that then isolates those highlights and maybe i'll do the same over here to sort of push that round a little bit just introducing that and because it's a slight smudge brush you can push it back in as well if you need to so a little something like that will look great facing your light source let's then go to our layers what's the next layer the next layer is the ocean surface so we can jump straight to this one we can tap on the layer and we can alpha lock it we can go to our colors we've got a nice selection of colors here so we're going to grab this color here which is also the same as this one we're going to grab the first color in that middle row we're going to go to our brush library and we're going to go ahead and use the soft brush we do want to go back to the layer though and tap on it and turn on the drawing assist and we're going to use the soft brush just to darken up behind the mountains first of all so just round here just darken that up really the lightest area is just going to be about here and that's about it so we're going to darken up in behind there we can reduce our size of our brush and just darken up under here too just pushing that shadowed area here you can leave the odd little bit like that that's fine and then go back to your colors and let's grab this darker tone so it's the third color on that middle row and again just darken up those shadow areas except we've got another color so we're just sort of blending in our shadow tones together i'm going to bring that around a little bit more and i'm going to really try to take away a little bit of the light from this area and darken up underneath that rock i'm going to reduce the brush size to two percent and just get a nice shadow underneath our main area here now what we'll also then do is go to our colors and we're going to grab one extra color for this area and that is going to be this color here at the bottom of the third column from the right it's going to be nice and dark so just darken up these areas here creating a really nice shadowed area both underneath our sort of mountain area here but also behind our little lighthouse rock as well and then what we'll also do is we'll go back to our layers we're going to go ahead and grab this set of mountains here and we're going to then increase our brush size and just darken up the bottom area of those as well we want those dark tones to sort of blend into one another near the water's edge so we're just darkening up the very bottom edge of our mountains there just adding in some darkness and also it will look great in behind here just to separate this rock from these ones in the background there so just darkening that up and pushing the color a little bit higher i'm then going to jump back to the ocean surface layer once again now i've added in those darker tones i can really get away with being a bit more brave with the color in those areas and kind of just create a very faint line where the bottom of those rocks are so so it kind of blends nicely into one another keeping it really really faint the next step is to then go to our layers and create a new layer we're going to go to our colors we're going to go ahead and grab this color here at the top of the fourth column from the right we're going to go back to the option of luminance and we're going to use the light pen again now what we're going to do with this is just create some really nice bright areas of the waves which are catching that light at the top so for example here i'm going to use this line that we created and just create a little bit of a flip like so at the minute it's nice and bright but we'll tone it down a little bit i'm just going to create a little flick here on these waves and again that's just where the lighting is just catching on our little waves and giving our design a nice little bit of contrast so a little flick around the edge there and we want to just make sure that sits on the water so a little bit more something like that maybe just go up this edge here and around slightly and then we're going to introduce some random little waves here in the water as well so just a couple of waves like so maybe another one back there 
maybe even the tiniest little flick here and here. And then just around the edge here of our little island, we're just gonna create a little bit of a rounded flick and then just, just run that off to the right there. We'll do the same on the opposite side. We'll just create a little rounded flick and just push that off. That's almost like the water crashing onto that little island. We'll create another little wave there and maybe another one there. And then zooming out, we've got these beautiful pieces that are catching the light from above. So we're gonna to go to the layer. We're gonna tap on the N for normal. And we're gonna scroll this down until we get to overlay. That will bring in a lot of the color around it. So you can see now it's no longer like a white, it's grabbing the blues from underneath and it's gonna look great. And just before we move on from this layer here, we're gonna to go to our ocean surface again. We're gonna to go to our colors and grab this color here. So it's the fourth column from the right, the middle color. We're gonna go back to our brush library and use the option of airbrushing and the soft brush. Keep that brush size nice and small, maybe around about 2%. And in this sort of area here, I'm just gonna introduce this extra little bit of green tone. Now what this will do is this will kind of add like a bit of a highlight. It'll also add some sort of variation in your colors. Keep it nice and small, not too sort of chunky, and then just let it run a tiny bit in behind here. So just a little bit of color right here. That's basically where the light's just avoiding these shadowed areas here from our mountains and getting right onto the water. Now, if we go to our layers, the next layer up by two is the rock for where the lighthouse is on. So we're gonna tap on this layer and alpha lock it just as we did the others. We'll go to our colors. We'll grab the blue first of all. So the bottom color in the fourth column from the right. And we'll go back to our brush library, making sure we're still on airbrushing and the soft brush. And again, anything that faces the light. Now we're gonna add a shadow directly in behind our lighthouse. So I'm gonna go ahead and make this brush size about sort of three to 4% and just chuck in some blue here first of all. Again, we wanna blend in that beautiful blue into the teal. And then also this area here too, would get a little bit of light, leaving this gap on purpose. We then go back to our colors and grab the next color up in the column. And then we'll do the same. So we'll just introduce this more greeny teal tone on top, more a little bit closer towards the edges than the sort of bottom area. And that'll give you a nice transition of the blues. We're then gonna go ahead and go to our layer. We're gonna tap on it and use the drawing assist. And we're gonna go to our colors and we're gonna go ahead and grab this color here. It is the bottom color in the third column from the right. And using the soft airbrush still, we're gonna go ahead and make the brush size a little bit smaller, about 2%. And we're just gonna shadow around the base of the lighthouse to start with. So just creating a little bit of a shadow. I'm more focused on the edges here, just making sure they've got a nice little bit of a the shadowed edge, make sure they actually look like they touch the surface. And then if we increase our brush size up to something a bit bigger, a larger 2%, I'm just gonna go ahead and just fan out a shadow, like so, just make, it, make sure that blends out towards the edges, just creating a bit of a shadow. Right now it doesn't look like much, but if we also then go back to the layer, tap on it and turn off the drawing assist, we can reintroduce this shadow now towards the base so just introducing, I'm gonna make it a bit bigger, about four or five percent. Introducing this shadow in this area here. And now your shadow looks like it actually has a proper purpose and kind of sits and involves itself in its environment. Then go back to the brushes, grab that medium blend that I've provided. And again, just start to just work in some random flicks from below. That will just give your little bit of landscape a little bit more character a little bit more definition and just push that up a little bit here and there. Maybe just get a little bit of color on the edges here, just darkening that up, making it look like it really does round off towards us. And again, if you want to, you can push your shadows down. So you can use this as a blend brush and just push the shadows down where necessary. So just have a play with that a few times, chuck your, your shadows here and there just to create a bit of a, a bit of a rocky scape, but making sure your shadow here is nice and prominent behind the lighthouse. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to our layers. We're gonna to go to the ocean layer. We're gonna tap on it and we're gonna alpha lock it so we can't paint outside of it. And we're gonna tap on it and we're gonna use the option of drawing assist. We're then gonna to go to our colors and we're gonna grab this darker tone here. It is the third color in the middle row. Our brush needs to go back to the soft brush under airbrushing. And the size wants to be around about sort of that five or 6% mark. And we're just gonna sort of darken up towards the edges here. So just start off quite dark on the edge here and blend round to get a slightly lighter tone towards the middle. 
which what we can then do is also go to our colors and grab this dark tone here, the bottom of the third column from the right. And you wanna be very sort of sparing with this because it is very dark. And just maybe just overlap that and push that inwards a tiny bit, but make sure you make it a little bit darker on the edges over here. Before going back to your colors and grab this tone again, the original color, the first color, and then just add the tiniest lighter area on the edges. So what you do is you kind of create that rounded look Got a little bit of a shadow here, goes back into the base color and the base color is also in the middle. Now what I also wanna do is add some nice light rays. So we're gonna go ahead and go to our layers. We're gonna go ahead and create a new layer. We're gonna tap on it and we're gonna clipping mask it. So it's also stacked within the middle here. We're gonna go to our colors and we're gonna go ahead and grab this greeny sort of tone here. So it is the middle color in that fourth column from the right. Now for a minute, we're gonna sort of freehand it we're gonna go ahead and just draw in some lines like so. If you spill out ever so slightly, just make a note of it, you'll have to come back to it. And we're gonna sort of fan out some lines that get a little bit wider towards the edges. So we're just gonna create some lines in here, different sort of thicknesses in terms of weight and pressure. And then reduce the brush size, what was sort of 4% down to maybe say two and create some slightly thinner lines in here. Just some slightly thinner ones like so. And that'll just create some nice areas of light making its way through the water. But what we'll do is we'll go ahead and go to our eraser and tap on it, making sure we grab, say, the soft airbrush. That'll be a nice brush to use for this. And then reduce your brush size down to 4% and just tidy up anything that's spilt over. We're using the soft airbrush because then what it will do is it will sort of fade out the top of the line ever so slightly. So anything that just spilt out above, erase that. We'll go to the layer. We're gonna tap on it and change it from normal. We're gonna change it to add. And that will sort of tie in the colors a little bit more. That will just nicely bring it all together. And what you can also do is then just grab your eraser, make it a little bit bigger, about 7%, and just darken up the top area. So I'm just erasing a little bit here, just towards the middle area, so that the lines are not necessarily touching the surface. It's just a little bit of a gap. And then you've got the lines underneath. Now what I want to go ahead and do is show what this looks like underneath the water, just sort of bring it through a little bit. So I'm going to go to my layers. And first of all, I'm going to grab these ocean lines here that we made, these nice little bright areas. I'm going to tap on it. And I'm going to go ahead and drag them up above those sort of extra little lines that we just made a second ago. I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to drag it underneath those lines that we just moved. So just here. So we've got the bright areas on the top and then our new empty layer. We're gonna to go to our colors and we're gonna grab the first color on the top row. We're gonna to go to our brush library and grab calligraphy and the monoline brush. And we're gonna basically just carry on this shape here all the way under the water. So just create like a big rocky area that runs underneath the water, create a fun little shape. So just little area like so, just let that run out. And then link up your lines across the top so we wanna go ahead and go all the way to the edge, just trying to make sure that that gets quite close to the shape and also go all the way around underneath the wood area and drag and drop the color in. And then what we'll do is we'll just correct that color. So we're gonna go up to our colors and let's go ahead and grab this color here again, that very dark tone and drag and drop it into that space. Then what we're gonna do is grab our eraser and we're gonna go ahead and start to just feather it out a little bit. So we're gonna feather it out here at the top. So I'm going left to right, left to right, left to right, I wanna get rid of this because what we want to do is we wanna show that bit of water just here, but still see the shape through it. So it's a little bit sort of faint in this area here. I can then also run into the top of the shape that's underneath the water as well. So just giving it a very faint bit of blue come through. And then most definitely towards the bottom, fade that out as well. So just fading that out edge to edge, creating a really very faint shape back there just to give the impression that the rock is there and it goes all the way under the water, but we can't really see it too much. And there we go, that kind of looks like now it runs into the water very, actually quite convincingly. Now we're gonna go to our layers. We're gonna go ahead and take a look up. So we've, then we've got the layers for the lines on the water. They're fine as they are. We're then gonna get into the lighthouse. So I'm gonna leave this gray block here, which is the glass. I'm gonna go ahead and go to the lighthouse and go ahead and the layer above where we added the white lines and the windows, we can actually tap on that and we can merge it down. We can create a new layer, tap on that layer and clipping mask it and tap on the layer and drawing assistant. We're gonna go ahead and go to our colors. We're gonna grab this color here 
it is the fourth color on that bottom row and we want to make our brush the soft airbrush under airbrushing we're going to create a shadow that's going to run down the very back here of the lighthouse now i'm going to make the brush size about two percent and just run a straight line down the middle we are going to get rid of a lot of color here and leave just a, a very sort of light edge on the lighthouse so we're going to erase into here just leaving those edges a little bit sort of brighter just the tiniest bit though something like this because all the lighting is coming from the opposite side so the light is wrapping around but just not enough to brighten this area here then we're going to go to our colors and grab that darker tone again the bottom of the third column from the right we're just going to run the very 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 light line through the middle here but towards the bottom we're going to go left to right left to right and just blend out the base of the lighthouse here just blending it into the ground a little bit more just giving it a bit more of a darker shadow towards that bottom edge so that immediately makes it look a lot more 3d it already looks like it ties into its environment but adding some color around it will also do that too so we're going to go to our layers and create another new layer tap on that layer and clipping mask it tap on that layer and drawing assist it go to your colors we'll grab the blue first of all at the bottom of the fourth column from the right and again, we're just going to go ahead and just introduce some blue on these edges. And to me, this is the best bit. This really softens up that lighthouse, integrates it into the color scheme. You know it's still red, but it's got a little bit of a blue hue on those edges. I'm going to go ahead and just brighten up the top here of the lighthouse. So yes, there's a shadow area, but there's also a little bit of lighting as well. Now what you can also do is if you want to get nice and intricate, is zoom in, reduce the brush size down to say 1% and just brighten up the underside a little bit of here and just push that inwards just a tiny bit and maybe even brighten up the top edge here as well so that will just give you a little bit more detail and then just like before we then go to our colors and grab the color above it so the middle color in the fourth column from the right make that brush size back up to maybe around about two or three percent and again just on those edges just outside of the shape you can see i'm very much outside and then just bringing the color in a tiny bit we want to introduce some light at the top like so just making sure it's a nice sort of green color and there we go our lighthouse now looks like it really does fit in with the rest of our design what we're then going to go ahead and do is go to our layers and create another new layer we're going to tap on the layer and add a drawing assist to it we're going to go to our colors and grab this yellow tone it's the fifth color on that bottom row we're going to go to our brush library and go to calligraphy and the monoline brush and we're going to go ahead and create some nice light beams from the top of our lighthouse. So what we're going to do is we're going to do it on one side only for a second. Let's just draw a beam out like so. And you can see it's on the opposite side as well. I'm going to make that a little bit bigger, a little bit higher. And you can go all the way to the edge. And then we're going to go ahead and kind of reflect the same angle. Make sure you hold your line down and just run that all the way to the edge. And then what you can do is you can just link them in the middle. And then what you can do is, is just go down that line and link them too. Drag and drop the color into that space. Then go to your layer. We're going to go ahead and tap on the end for normal and change that to overlay. That will give us a bit more of a greeny color for a moment. And what we'll do is we'll also go up to our adjustments, go to Gaussian Blur. We'll swipe from left to right. We'll get rid of that, making it a little bit sort of more diffused. So I'm going to go up to 6% Gaussian Blur there tap on my adjustments when I'm done and grab my eraser tap on the eraser making sure we're still using the soft brush which we are under airbrushing brush size about 10 percent I'm just going to sort of fade that out on the right hand side we don't want the glow to go all the way to the edges and we want to really let that light get a lot lot sort of more faint as it makes its way away from the lighthouse so yes you can just about work out the line but it's a little bit more faint as it makes its way away from the lighthouse now that's the first layer we're going to go to the layer, swipe it to the left and duplicate it. We're going to change the layer effect from overlay. We're going to change it to vivid light. Now this will make everything super yellow for a minute. But what we're going to do is we want to concentrate this new layer just towards the center area. So again, we're going to erase from the right, blend inwards until we start to make sure I'm getting really, really light with my pressure that the yellow is pretty much just here right next to the actual light source. And then we fade out into that other layer that's underneath. So it's about building up. We've got one layer here, which is the vivid light, which is roughly this sort of size. And then it fades out into the layer underneath. 
and blends out. And in fact, I'm going to go back to the layer underneath and just make sure I do a better job of just blending that out very lightly. Just going back over it, just fading that out a little bit more, making sure it nicely just gets diffused as it goes. Now at this point, what you want to consider is these lights here in the background, I'm going to go back to the layer for them. And I'm going to grab my cursor and just use the freeform option and just scale them up a little bit. What you want to try and avoid is these lines here for the northern lights sort of running into the lighthouse. Because in my opinion, when you get sort of the colors here as they merge together, it kind of ruins the illusion a little bit of the lighthouse and the lights coming off of it. So moving it up sort of gives that a little bit of space to breathe, but also these beams here coming off of the lighthouse. So I'm going to tap on my cursor when I'm done. Now what you can do is if you're concerned about your layers at this point, the background area, now that we've added in our glow, you can merge the stars, the waves and the gradient all to the inside of the jar if you want like this. I'm going to tap with two fingers to undo because I don't need to. But also you can then go ahead with your mountains. You can merge those two together. And the lighthouse now, what you can do is these layers here, so the lighthouse, the shadow and the color on the edges, you can merge those three together. Now what we want to do is give our jar a little bit of a glass look to it, make it look like it is actually a glass jar. So we're going to go to our layers. We're going to go towards the top here and above our layers, just underneath our base group though, we're going to create a new layer. We're going to go down our layers to the inside jar layer. We're going to tap on it and we're going to use the option of select. It's important that color fill is now turned off. This is what it looks like on and this is what it looks like off. And once we've got our selection of the jar, we're going to go up to our layers that empty layer we made at the top, we're going to tap on it, we're going to tap on it, and we're going to mask it. You won't see any visual change, but we've added basically the shape of that object to this empty layer above. Then what we're going to go ahead and do is go down back to the inside jar. We're going to tap on it and again use the option of select, but this time we're going to invert the selection using this option here. We're going to go back to our layers. We're going to go back up to this layer here at the top with the mask on it. We're going to go to our colors. We're going to grab this color here. It is the middle color in the second column from the right. We're going to go back to the layer and this layer here, we're going to tap on it and we're going to use the option of fill. So what we've done there is you can just about see from the thumbnail. We've filled in all this area around the outside, but you can't see that yet until I go to my adjustments, Gaussian blur, and we swipe from left to right. And immediately you take the design from a flat design into a more 3D look to it because you bring in a little bit of sort of a rounded bit of glass color on the side there. So I'm going to bring that in. And I'm going to bring it into something about 22% and then tap on my adjustments when I'm done. Next, what we'll do is go to our layers. We'll create another new layer and we'll create some nice little reflections on the side. So we're going to go ahead and go to our colors, making sure we're still using this color here, the middle color in that second column from the right. We'll grab our brush and we'll go ahead and we'll use the monoline brush set to around about sort of 50 percent we're going to go ahead and draw in a line here and pop your finger on the screen to make sure it's nice and straight and that's going to be like a little light source that's off to the side here and then i'm going to go ahead and create another little curve at the top here as if there's a light source at the top of the glass and i can tap on edit arc if needs be and just adjust these points just to make sure that they they nicely round off Make sure they match up to our little shape of our glass there. And then what we'll do is we'll go to our eraser. The eraser is still set to the soft airbrush and about 8%. I'm just going to go ahead and blend out the edge on either side of both. So just blend out this little bit here as well down the side of the glass. Then I'm going to go to my adjustments, perspective blur, and this will drop a dot in the middle of the screen. And we can swipe from left to right and that will just blend out those lines a little bit. Now we don't want to get rid of too much definition from them. If you go too far you'll end up with something really soft like this. But I want a nice little reflection on the edge there. So I'm going to drop this one to around about sort of the, I'm going to go to about the 26% mark. And then tap on my adjustments when I'm done. I'm going to change the layer effect. So tap on the layer and tap on the normal and change it to the option of color dodge. That will bring in a little bit of color beside it. We can also lower the opacity down of the layer, which will just take away a little bit of that brighter edge to it, making it a little bit more faint. So I've gone down to 55% there. And that just gives our little bit of a glass look to it on that top edge. What we'll also do is we'll go to the layer, swipe it to the left and duplicate it. We're gonna go ahead and grab our cursor. 
We are going to flip it horizontally so we can move it over to the right hand side as well. I'm going to move this a little bit closer to the edge of the glass this time. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my adjustments, Gaussian blur and swipe from left to right. I want to get rid of this a lot. I don't want any definition. This is the defined side of the reflections. This is an extra side for just a little bit of extra content. And then we'll go back to the layer. We'll tap on the layer option and change it from color dodge. If I move this across, we go from color dodge, we move it to vivid light and we can maybe increase the opacity up. This will just bring in a lot more color on the edge. This is 75% there. And you can see this edge now has a nice little blue hue to it, which also runs around the top as well. So that is actually the glass all done with. We can then go ahead and go to our layers and work on the base. So we can open up the base group, the bottom layer first of all, let's start with that. And that is the bottom rim. We're gonna tap on it and we're gonna alpha lock it. It's drawing assisted, so it uses the symmetry option. We're gonna to go to our brush library and we're gonna grab this dark tone here at the bottom of the third column from the right. And we're gonna make our brush the soft airbrush again, of course, under airbrushing. We're gonna make our brush size around about that sort of four to five percent mark. I always like it around about that mark. And we're gonna darken up the edge first of all. So just sort of introduce a little bit of a shadow around the very bottom edge. Introducing that, making it a little bit darker where you can, right up against that bottom edge. This will also make it look a little bit more rounded. Then we'll also introduce a top down shadow, which will just emphasize the crease and the joining area between the piece of wood above and the wood below. So that will just introduce a little bit of a shadow there. And then we're gonna make our brushes a little bit smaller, around about 4%, and we're gonna be very faint with this. So you may need to lower your opacity down. We're gonna start here and just blend around towards the inside, keeping it nice and light. So just blending this color around, making sure it's nice and gradual as it makes its way around. You'll also see I've left a little bit of a gap on the edge, just for some edge lighting. And then I'm also gonna go ahead and just really darken up the bottom edge, give it some more contrast and also a little bit more at the top here as well. So I'm just gonna go across this edge, make sure it's nice and dark. Let's add some awesome texture to this. So we're gonna to go to our layers and create another new layer. We're gonna tap on this layer and clipping mask it. We're gonna go ahead and go to our brush library and under materials, we're gonna use the Blackwood brush. Now the brush is currently set to 13% and I'm just going to give a good amount of coverage all over the top of this and we'll end up with a beautiful amount of this awesome texture on the inside. Now just to make this look a little bit better we're going to go to the layer, we're going to tap on the layer option and we're going to change it from normal and we're going to change it to overlay. That will make the texture a lot more prominent. Let's repeat that now for the other two layers above. So we're going to go up to our layers, this shape here, tap on the layer and alpha lock it so we can't paint outside of it. What you can do is you can go to your brush library and go right to the top and go to recent and this will show you the two brushes we've just been using, the soft brush and blackwood, so you can easily jump between them. So we're going to use the soft airbrush under airbrushing. We're going to go ahead and make the brush size a bit bigger this time, maybe about 6 or 7%. And we're going to darken up the underside of here just to bring in the shape. There we go, that just nicely brings in that top edge. And we'll also darken up under here too. Just a little bit of a shadow under there. And then I'm going to go ahead and make the brush a little bit smaller, 6% still, and just start here and blend in a highlight that goes all the way around. So a little bit of a shadow that then goes into that highlight there. I've also again left the edges a little bit brighter there. Yet again, we can then go ahead at this point now and make the brush maybe a bit smaller, about 3%, and just emphasize certain things. Maybe just darken up underneath this edge here darken up maybe just the, the joining part down here just really give some nice contrast in here there you know, something like this and then again we'll go up to our layers we'll create a new layer tap on the layer and clipping mask it change the layer option from normal to overlay go to your brush switch it to the blackwood at the top here in recent you can make the brush a bit bigger, maybe 16% and just cover this area with this beautiful piece of wood. The only thing I don't like in particular is because this brush repeats a pattern, it shows the lines running into one another. My preference would be to maybe go to your cursor and maybe just move this across a little bit in whatever direction you prefer or even flip it horizontally so the lines just don't match and you end up with some nice separated pieces of wood. So I'm going to go ahead and do exactly that and tap on my cursor when I'm done. 
And then we'll go up to the next layer above, which is this one here. Tap on it and alpha lock it, of course. Now this one we're going to add a shadow to, but we'll also add a highlight as well. So we're going to go ahead and go to our brush. Go to soft airbrush again. Brush size needs to be a little bit smaller because it's a smaller area, about 3%. We're then going to go ahead and enter a little bit of a shadow here where essentially the glass sinks into the wood. So there's a little bit of a shadow there. I'm then going to go ahead and introduce a shadow that rolls around the bottom edge. Just a light one. Just a light one like so. And then again, just like we did before, maybe just a shadow here that just blends around towards the middle. So there's a slightly darker area on the sides. Then what we'll also do is just go to our colors. We'll grab this color here at the top of the fourth column from the right. Make the brush size a lot smaller, about 2%. And in this area here, you want to be super light with your pressure. So maybe lower your opacity. Just add in a little bit of a highlight on that edge. So it makes it look like that area there is actually reflecting onto the wood. And then again, we'll go up to our layers, create a new layer. Tap on it and clipping mask it. Change your color. You want to go to this color again at the bottom of the third column from the right. We're going to go ahead and go to our brush and the black wood. And again, we'll just cover that with some beautiful wood texture and immediately get that really awesome burnt wood look. And then to top this off, we'll just add a little bit of a shadow at the bottom. So we'll go to our layers. We're going to want to go ahead and create a new layer underneath the base group. So we can close that down and create a new layer. Tap on it and give it a nice drawing assist. Using the same color, we're going to want to change our brush back to the soft air brush. Make the brush size about five maybe bigger than that maybe about sort of seven percent and we're going to want to go ahead and add in a shadow that runs around the base here so just make it look like it really does stick on the ground and you can push that shadow a little bit further back as if there's a light source sort of in front of us i'm going to reduce the brush size down to about five percent just darken that up right around the base of a shadow always is the key one to make it look like it really does sit on the surface that you're trying to convince us as the viewer that it actually sits on that space. So we're gonna go ahead then and just make the brush size back up to about 7%. I just wanna make that a little bit wider and a little bit further down. And then I'm also gonna go ahead and go to my colors. I'm gonna go ahead and grab this color here. So it's the bottom right color of the palette. Brush size is gonna be about 8%. And I just wanna sort of brighten up this area here just a little bit, just in front of us just to add in a little something extra, make it look like there's a little bit of a flaw there at the bottom of our design. Now, as always in my tutorials, I like to include some final adjustments. These are optional. These are just things that I would see and then you could maybe also understand why I would change things just so that you can change it in your own design. So this line here and this little bit here, that's the layer I want to try and find. So I'm gonna grab that layer here and all I'm gonna do is grab my eraser and just blend this out at the bottom. It's far too bright in towards this area of the wood. So I'm just gonna blend that out and I'm gonna be a bit brave and just get rid of quite a bit of it, but just enough that there's a line there. Another adjustment would be onto this piece of wood here. I think we could get away with adding a little bit more color onto it. So I'm gonna go back to my layers in the base and grab this layer here. So it's the actual rim. Go to my colors. I'm gonna go ahead and grab this color here, the green color in the middle of the fourth column from the right. Soft airbrush still. And I'm just going to try and just introduce a little bit of this green onto the wood. I think it will look really nice. It will also balance out the, the warmer wood look, but also just introduce a little bit of color on there. I'm going to make it a bit smaller again, about 2%, and just introduce a little bit more and also round into that edge as well. Just to, again, make it look like our design really does spill over into the wood around it. And then an extra final thing I want to do is just amend this mountain here. So I'm going to go down to that mountain. I'm going to go down to this layer here. I'm going to go ahead and tap on it and turn off the alpha lock just so I can erase, tap on the eraser and change it to calligraphy in the monoline brush. 80% is the brush size. I just want to go ahead and just chip into this a tiny bit. Just maybe even just really revealing some more stuff underneath it, but just getting rid of it a little bit more. Overall, I'm really happy with that. So I'm going to pinch with two fingers, go full screen with four, and we end up with today's finished design. As always, be sure to share your designs with me over on Instagram. I've also got a link to my TikTok, and you can also go ahead and share them with me on Facebook. And as always, a massive shout out to all of my supporters over on Patreon. If you want to get your name featured in videos, as well as exclusive tutorials, 
sneak peeks of upcoming designs, early access to videos and much much more, hit the link in the description down below and come and show your support. And if you liked this video you may also like this one here on the screen now. So be sure to subscribe for weekly tutorials. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.